guys, the world still sucks. And, like, it sucks that the world sucks, but I think, like, one of the most, like, sucky parts about it is that it doesn't have to suck. Because, like, we could make the world a better place. We could, like, we could all be nice to each other. We could all, like, go to this goal of not, like, fighting and hurting each other all the time. If that is like our collective goal, right? Like if our collective goal is to not fight and hurt each other like all the time, then we can do that. That is that is a possibility, you know? I know that sounds like some hippie stuff right there, man, but like it just it just makes sense. It logically makes sense. Like if we can figure if our goal is to figure out how to stop fighting with each other and learn how to be nice, then we can do that. That is just a possibility we can do, okay? So, and here's here's my 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 suggestion. My suggestion not like rule, not like any hard and fast like this is exactly what we need to do, but here here's what I think that we need to do in order to create a truly peaceful world, okay? We need three things. We need peace, love, and understanding. <laughs> Again, hippie stuff, but but hear me out, okay? Hear me out. Okay, so here here's what each part means to me, okay? Peace peace should be pretty self-evident. Don't fight with each other. Like if you're fight if you're fighting with someone, if you're going to war with someone, your goal should be to stop doing that. <laughs> you know? As in like like just like not necessarily like not have the goal of like not fighting with each other, but to like have the goal of like peacefully interacting with people, you know? And I think in general, the world is already pretty good at this, right? Like if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all, like that kind of like mentality. Interacting with people in general without like physically or emotionally harming them. Again, pretty, pretty obvious stuff, but I think it's like, it should like be pretty apparent, right? It should be like pretty, it should 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 be obvious that we need to be doing this. And if we're not doing that, that's a problem. But like, there are like, there's, there's it's easy to get caught in the mentality of like, I need to fight with this person in order to like, in order to just for, because like this person is like wrong and needs to like, be killed or whatever <laughs> not mostly not necessarily to that extreme of a degree but like you know and i do agree that like i don't agree that we need to kill people but i agree that we sometimes like fighting with people is not is not avoidable right like that you could consider what i'm doing right now fighting with people who fight with people right <laughs> But the key is, like, the goal should be peace. Like, any sort of thing. Like, if we have reached a point where we're fighting with someone, that is an issue. That is, like, a fault. That is, like, we messed up somewhere. So let's figure out where we messed up and how we can fix it. So that doesn't happen again. You know? Like, so the goal of fighting should be to stop fighting. You know? If you're fighting with someone stop stop doing that you know figure out why you're fighting with someone and try to reach some sort of conclusion where you're not fighting <clears throat> and the next thing is love okay love is is a very strong word obviously you don't need to like love everyone on the street as you would like a close family member or a close friend but like in general just like appreciating someone don't assume that like someone is like a terrible person and deserves any hate like like listen humans are very fragile creatures they mess up a lot the it is a very flawed uh species but like the human race is a very flawed species you know people will do bad things like all the time and like make people make mistakes people are imperfect we can't all be like absolutely like perfect amazing people like all the time right and like a lot of the time like people do often do terrible things that deserve 
like being hated for like i'm not saying that like we shouldn't hate anyone regardless of what they do because that's not how like that's not how we make things better you know like we have to acknowledge like again with the war and fighting like we have to like we have to acknowledge like okay we messed up some at some point and i hate you but how do we how do we make this better how do we like come to some sort of like a some some sort of conclusion where we don't hate each other like how do like yes i hate you but like how do we fix this problem what can we do about it you know and sometimes there's like there's that's that question is very difficult because like if someone did something unforgivable like how do you like how do you how do you become how do you become grow to not hate them right uh this is something i'll get touch on more later but like this is an end goal like it's unreasonable to like assume that like okay we can perfect 100 percent everything's great all the time forever like we can achieve that like because like realistically like everything's gonna be flawed everything's gonna be like we can't tr reach a truly peaceful world at least not within our lifetimes but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't try right we shouldn't like even if we can't like even if we can only get like 0.0002% of the way there like the world will overall be better by getting a little closer right so it's not I'm not saying like necessarily like you're not allowed to hate people who've done horrible things but like your goal should be like let's hate them a little less you know like because hatred is a negative emotion and really only assigned to th people that we at usually at the core do not understand and so we're just like oh I guess I just hate you which leads me to the third and probably most important part of peace, love, and understanding, understanding. Understanding can be the hardest part because it's, again, as I was saying before, it's almost impossible to gain a 100% true, full understanding of anything. But again, you, should, you shouldn't use that as an excuse to not try, right? Because like through understanding, this just naturally leads into peace and love. Like if you understand something, then it's easier to like not to solve the other issues like it's easier if you understand them it's easy someone or something it's easier to like not fight with them because you're like okay well we can resolve this in this other way that i that i didn't understand before or like same thing with like hate you know understanding should should really like be like the priority and in the overall end goal and peace and love because it does naturally lead, lead into peace and love and but i'm not saying that like peace and love without understanding is not useful because like again you can't ever get to a full understanding with someone so at the very least like if you don't understand something you should at least treat it with peace and love right because there's no way to understand someone or something if you don't have a good relationship with it you know if you don't if you're constantly fighting and hating it all the time so it's good as a stopgap at into getting to understanding but you shouldn't use that as like to st you shouldn't use that as an excuse be like oh i don't need to understand this because i already have like peace and love towards it and you know i'm not hurting it and it's not hurting me so like whatever because a lot of people like the reason a lot of bad people are able to do a lot of bad is because people don't try to understand that because people are lazy with understanding you know that whole quote about the well, bad things can only happen when good people stop trying you know like the a lot of the reason why a lot of the bad things happen in the world is because like oh well we don't understand that so they're able to just do things under the table without anyone noticing because they're like oh well no one let's just assume that 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 person's doing good let's pr assume this this thing is a good thing because like yeah sure they seem good on the surface so like why not and that allows them to like hide in that ignorance and do a bunch of bad things so again even if you can't gain a full understanding of someone or something doesn't mean you should at least try to get a little bit closer right because you never know you never know like that one percent like even if you could only get like one percent more understanding you never know if that one percent is going to completely retextualize everything and like have everything like fit into place and like help you like kind of fill in the gaps between all the other things that you don't understand you never know when like 
that one question, that one interaction, that one conversation with someone is going to massively widen your understanding of someone and like change that person's whole world and change your whole world, right? Like it could just be like that tiny bit, you know, be like, okay, well, I've tried enough and I've gotten nowhere, so whatever. So, but it doesn't mean you you shouldn't stop trying because like that next, the next part could, could be the one part that is the most important part, you know? So you should never stop trying. Cause just that little effort of trying to understand someone can mean a lot to a lot of people. Like for me, for example, I have spent a large part of my life like not understanding the world around me and like people not understanding me because I was like a weird socially awkward guy, you know? So like people like not trying to like people like like people are like generally nice to me. They're like, oh, okay, you, you're, you're whatever, you know, we I don't really get what you're doing, but like sure, whatever. But like nobody really like tried to like in general like hardcore like understand me like or even like put any effort towards trying to really like understand like what i was getting at you know and that like a that hurts <laughs> just straight up like when people are like oh i don't get what this person is like whatever who cares and it also it stops my understanding because like that's how we get to get that's how we get more understanding is food conversation so like food someone asking me questions and asking me like oh hey what's what do you what do you mean by this what do you what's what's this mean exactly oh hey sorry if this sounds dumb but like what do you mean by this like that forces me to explain that and further understand it myself you know basically all i'm saying is like we can make each other's lives better you know like i under i hope you understand you help me understand we all make the world go round you know we all help each other in the end so that's why I'm saying, like, you shouldn't stop being like, oh, I don't understand this person. Try to understand that person, you know? And per I'm using person metaphorically as in, like, the world in general. Like, this can also apply to, like, groups and organizations and whatnot. But also, I feel like most importantly, people, which is why I say people. Like, talk to, the talk to somebody, ask someone a question, because you never know what... You never know how much a single conversation can do to better the world in general. So like, why should you stop having conversations if they can do so much good? Again, the goal is not to gain a full understanding of everyone that you ever meet. The whole goal is to just, for that to be an overall end goal of human society. Like that is what we should be aiming for as like a collective species. Like A, getting off the earth before it explodes and B, like tr gaining a true full peace love and understanding towards everyone and everything but again probably not achievable within our lifetimes probably not achievable within our species lifetimes but uh it doesn't mean that like because like just getting that little again as i was saying before just getting that little bit closer could mean a whole lot could change things for the better so much you know so even if we're not we haven't completed the goal getting closer to the goal is more important in a sense it's the journey not the destination so as long as you're pursuing peace love and understanding and you're being a purveyor of peace love and understanding and acting in this way then we can make the world a better place this really sounds like a, some sort of like hippie cult and i'm not meaning it to sound that way i'm just suggesting a way of thinking that could benefit people in the i'm sorry nicole oh my gosh Anyway, I'm not starting a cult because the whole thing about this is if you disagree, if you don't understand, then like, I don't understand this fully either. So like, I want to there to be like this back and forth of like, okay, try to gain an understanding of everything, like including of what I'm talking about and including like me of what I'm talking about. Because like, even when it comes to yourself, like that you, you can never gain a full understanding of all the crazy intricacies and insane layers of the human brain you know <laughs> and i think that's another important part is like as far as like peace love and understanding towards the rest of the world in general i feel like one of the most important parts is to have peace love and understanding towards yourself right like if you're constantly like fighting with yourself through inner monologues which i do a lot because maybe i'm a little schizophrenic but 
if you're constantly fighting with yourself and arguing with yourself and beating yourself up, then you're not, it's, you're going to have a terrible life, you know? <laughs> if you're, because, like, you are the person that you spend the most time with, so make that person a good person, you know? And same thing with, uh, th with love. Just, like, love yourself. Self-love, you know? I think a lot of people are good about that, but I think there's a lot of people who, uh, including me at times, who, like, I can't, I'm super critical of myself, and I'm like, ah, I could be doing this better, I could be doing this better, but, like, you know, I need to give myself that, like, love of, like, you know what, you're doing, you're doing that, you're, you're doing your best, you know, you're not, you could be doing better, and I know you're working hard, and just, like, say nice things like that to yourself, you know? Who cares if people call you cringe? <laughs> and, of course, like, give yourself understanding, like, you, as I said, was saying before, like, you can gain understanding for yourself who trying to understand other people. That's why, like, that's why I'm so fascinated by all of this and whatnot. Like, why I think about this so much. Because, like, I want to understand, I want to understand the world so I can better understand myself. So I can better understand the world. And so other people can have better understand themselves. So they can better understand me and I can better understand them. And they can better understand me and I can understand them. And be, they can be understanding me and I can understand them. And we can overall make the world a better place. Okay, so now that we have a vague understanding of peace, love, and understanding, let's try, let's, let's continue to build our understanding to get closer to 100%. Again, not going to get at 100%, but the closest we can get, the better, okay? So let's, let's look at some, some real-life examples of how we can better the world, okay? Or like how we can think about things to better the world. Because my first example is kind of abstract. It's a uh, prison, jail, and punishment. Which, again, is kind of like that stopgap I was saying. Because like, we would not need a lot. We would not need prisons or laws if people didn't do bad things. But people do, like if people do act not under peace and love, you know? People act in ways of, like, hatred and violence and whatnot. And we do need something to do with these people until we can figure out how to stop this forever, you know? Until we can get 100% truly peaceful world. We need something to stop this, you know? And I think that's kind of, like, the mentality that, like... That's the mentality that prisons and punishment and stuff should have. Again, in actuality, you know, it's a lot more complicated, blah, 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 blah. We all know. <laughs> but the core idea, I think, is like, we need something to do with this person until we can think of a better solution, you know? We would not need punishment if people didn't do things that needed punishment, you know? It's, just a, it's mostly used as like a place of like, oh, I don't, you're doing bad things and I don't understand why. And until we can understand why, we need a place to put you. And that's basically what jails and prisons are. And so it's fine, like, again, actual, like, prison jails, very, more comp very much more complicated. But the whole idea, I think, is fine, again, as long as the end goal is to get rid of that. The end goal is to give people who don't give out peace and love, to give people understanding and figure out. Because, like, throwing someone in jail does not get rid of the core problem. It just gets rid of that person, you know? It doesn't factor into all these things of like what kind of like what kind of environment did this person grow up in what kind of like interactions did this person have what kind of like world did we make that caused this person to exist because if this person exists clearly we have done something wrong like something bad wrong we have done has happened <laughs> you know and again like to understand anything we have to go back to the big bang to the first point of causality and all that whatnot but basically like well we, we don't again we are working towards that understanding but we're not quite there yet so like i guess until we get there that's fine but again current prison systems like not th those ideals but you know uh I'm, I'm talking about ideals and metaphors okay so don't take anything too super literally I'm trying to say is we wouldn't need laws and punishment if these weren't happening and that's what we need to be working on, not punishing people who do bad things. 
Another thing is if someone disagrees with you, something I think is more applicable, especially on the internet. Like if someone, if there is a disagreement between two people and they are fighting, like that's obviously not like, that's obviously not under peace, love and understanding, obviously. Cause like the core issue is like, there's some sort of misunderstanding. There's people fighting. There is like one person has this opinion. Another person has this opinion. And there is no, like, the whole, it stems from, like, there is no objective truth. Like, we do not know the objective truth. Like, if we knew what it was objectively good, then we wouldn't need to convince anyone. <laughs> we wouldn't need to convince anyone that we were right because it would just be objective and it would be, like, you know. I think it's, I think it's arrogant to assume that, like, I know what is objectively good and you're an idiot for not, and I have to convince you. Like, we should be like, be willing to change our opinions and adjust and know that like, there's no objectiveness and that we're all just kind of like fumbling through for trying to figure out what's the best, you know? I think one of the most powerful superpowers that you can have is being able to change your mind. Because if you're willing to admit that you're wrong and change your mind, like you are infinitely adaptable. You can, you are, have the capacity to reach true enlightenment and peace, love and understanding. And so I think that's the whole like mentality people need to go into with arguments, not like proving you're right, just trying to figure out where is the misunderstanding and what can we do to fix it? Like what is our, what are our goals? and what how can we reach those goals together you know because like at the end of the day like everyone wants the same thing everyone wants to be like understood and wants to be happy you know it's just like how we reach that is where we disagree another thing is language politics and generally i think like that's an example of peace and love without any understanding like the idea of like, oh, you saying this word makes me feel bad, right? So stop saying that word, right? But I, th and I, and that's overall being like, okay, well, we all, like, I, that's understandable, right? Like, okay, well, I w prioritize peace and love when there is no, when we're working on the understanding, right? And so that's kind of like where we end up with, you know, where we have like censorship and whatnot and generally like saying nice things to each other. But the counter argument to that is like, we should understand why people say these things in the first place. If someone just says something that offends you and doesn't offend them or the person that they're talking to, you just happen to hear it. Like we should try to under, we should try to ex approach conversations and words on pe people's terms, not necessarily like our own terms like other people's terms not our own terms because like again l language is very like language changes all the time language is very flexible language is very like means different things to different people so like if this word means something to you it might mean something different to me and i this has obviously happened to me before like i've been called out for saying something that sounded mean or offensive even in situations where I did not intend to offend or say anything bad about anyone. Because like, again, you can't take words in a vacuum. Like I had never, I do not believe that I have ever said anything to try to inten intentionally hurt anyone. So if this word, and I understand like if this word means something different to you than it does to me, like I understand. And I think we need to like, we should we could come to an understanding of like okay well this word just means different things to each other and understand that and kind of just go our separate ways you know just like understand that and let people like do it because like there are certain like emotions certain words certain like things in my head that i can only understand and express in certain words so by limiting the word choice that you can use you're limiting the way that you think you know, because like, okay, I could w work around this word and think of some sort of simile, but like, 
there's no like and that might get me close to like the dictionary definition of the feeling that i have in my head but like a lot of words a lot of more like scholarly like family friendly pg words miss like the emotional like punch that i'm trying to get at when i say certain things but i again understand that like certain words mean different things to different people regardless of the context which is why i'm not using any word that could be considered any sort of offense to anyone in this podcast or whatever i'm making it because i want this to be a place of let anyone can come in and understand each other you know but ideally we would just be able to understand things that we say based on the context and not necessarily based on the dictionary definition of the word or what the context means to you basically different things different words mean different things to different people so basically we need to understand when cert two certain people just aren't compatible because of the way that they speak just conjure up different emotions than to each other you know and so that's when like we lead to a lack of understanding so like there are cert certain situations where it's better to just like if you don't understand what i'm trying to say then get out or i'm tr willing to compromise what i'm saying to make you understand you know we need a we need a balance of both all i'm trying to say is like consider the other per person's feelings all the time like consider that certain words mean bad things to some people but are a way of liberation and uh to communicate things for other people you know basically just be nice to each other you know be nice to everyone <laughs> all i'm saying so another example is the black lives matter movement which stems which is again is like a thing that has a lot of history and has been going on for decades and centuries and probably the entirety of human history <laughs> but it's again flared up recently and has made me start thinking about a lot of these things recently one of the many things that started me on this whole journey to make this podcast <laughs> of trying to like make the world a better place because basically a, it stems from a a lack of understanding leading to a lack of love leading to a lack of peace leading to people getting hurt and i think obviously to much lesser extents but i think this happens to a lot of people i think this is a very like core issue with humanity is that like we assume things of, of other people so that causes us to this loss of understanding like causes us to lose love to lose peace and to hurt people you know i think it's a very like core issue with humanity you know but like the 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 solution is infuriatingly simple it's just like don't assume things about people that you don't know <laughs> you know don't assume just because someone is a certain way just because you don't understand them they they're gonna do something bad or they're gonna do something to hurt you so you have to stop this you know like just understand that like everyone is their own unique individual everyone has their own unique experiences everyone has the reason that they exist and live and like you can't judge a book by its cover and again if this sounds really simple that's because it is <laughs> and that's why this whole like issue is so infuriating to to witness and to to take part of because like this this the answer is simple the answer is simple just just be nice to each other be, understand that not everyone is different and that's okay you know everyone has their own reasons for behaving the way that that they do and those ways are not always bad you know like don't assume bad things of people you know not every not, not everyone can do bad i don't know what i'm trying to, what i'm getting at anymore hold on <laughs> like if someone is like mean or rude to you like don't assume that's just how that's just who that person is don't assume that like that's just how they live their entire life you know because if we did that then yeah of course we'd be murdering people all the time but like that's not the case you know it'd be understandable to murder people all the time if we actually thought like the one interaction we had with them is 
reflective of the rest of their life, you know? <laughs> like, maybe that person just had a bad day. Maybe that person, like, is just, like, a misunderstanding something and would not be acting that way if they knew this one thing, you know? So, like, yeah, again, this problem is infuriatingly simple <laughs> to just understand that people are different. Anyway, I'm talking in circles, so let's go to the next topic. Which leads me to the problems that have come up recently in the Smash community and the fighting game community at large and the gaming community at large. There's a lot of, a lot of things like went down. And basically, I think it's like the opposite problem of what I was saying before, where like people assume like, oh, this person is like, respected by the community this person has done good things this person has done all this great in the in in the world and like has benefited like so many different people's lives so of course they have to be a good person in the rest of their lives they are incapable of doing anything bad right so it's like this issue of putting certain people on a pedestal of like they cannot do any wrong they are saints we can trust them 100%. And that's how people like, you know, like good people can do bad things just as easily as bad people can do good things, right? Like it's all like a spectrum. It's all like humans are very complex and intricate beings, you know? And again, most people don't take it to such an extreme, like good people doing bad things doesn't most to most people doesn't take it. Mostly just involves like getting into a, a fight or saying something insensitive. But, you know, it can be taken to these extremes where, like, people get, like, seriously hurt. So what I'm saying is, like, a lot of, I think a lot of these issues could have been prevented if we went to more, if we tried to understand people more. Not necessarily, like, oh, just assume everyone's out to screw you over. Like, not that mentality, because that's not a healthy way of living that life, of living life. And I tr I sometimes fall into that mentality all the time and it's not fun. It's not a fun place to be of just assuming that everyone is bad. But we shouldn't like assume that like everyone is a saint either, right? Like people are humans, people do these, humans are flawed, people do these certain things. So like we should try to understand them because like that's the, that's the best solution is to give more understanding because you have... This is, this is important. You have nothing to lose by understanding someone more. So, like, if someone truly is a good person, then learning more about them will enforce that good goodness that you see in them, right? Like, maybe, like, sh surely not everyone is good all the time, but, like, at least for me, I'm willing to, like, reveal a lot about myself because I know at the core... If, if people really understood like all the factors of it like I'm not perfect but like I feel like if everyone understood if pe some people understood every single aspect about me they would overall come across they would overall come away with being like yeah that guy is pretty good you know so on the other side of that if someone's hiding something if someone knows that like at the end of the day like they're not a good person <laughs> then they would want to hide that, right? Like, they'd have something to gain by this lack of understanding. I would only have positives. I would only have positivity to be gained from people understanding me because I think if people understood me more, people would like me more. I need to stop saying peas because I spit. But if someone is bad, if someone's doing bad things and they have reason to hide it, so we should find that out. Like, we shouldn't assume things of people because like if we don't assume things of people and try to learn more about them then we only have something to gain either we reveal someone who's doing something really bad or we reveal someone who's actually doing something really good and way better than you thought so like you have nothing to lose from knowing from not suspecting people not like not trusting anyone but like understanding more about somebody you have nothing to lose you shouldn't assume that like someone is this way so surely they have to be this other way too again i need to stop talking metaphors that's just how i think or like not metaphors like 
big picture, like, yeah, I guess metaphors. So, like, again, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. Bad people are only able to do bad things because good people don't, are lazy, basically. I forget the exact quote, but it's just people being lazy. And I'm not saying that, like, because, again, prioritize peace and love. So I'm not saying that, like, I definitely don't want to say put fault at anyone. I don't want to put, like, fault at anyone in particular because, like, Oh, well, there, A, it's already happened. There's nothing we can do about it. And B, like, hindsight's like 2020. Like, yeah, there's, I'm sure there's situations where I'm like, oh, I could have done this. I should have, we should have said this. We should have noticed this. But like, again, as long as we learn something from it, then we can get closer to making it better. You know, like it's already, it's in the past. It's already happened. Like we need to be focused not on like oh what what could we have done better not oh yeah never mind like we need to not like beat beat ourselves up about it like i think thoughts of like oh i could have done this i could have done this better are useful in the sense of like i could have done this better so in the future i will do that better you know not necessarily like oh i'm a terrible person because i let this happen because like at the end of the day like it happened we need to not beat ourselves up over it it might be like our fault, but like we can, it can, it can, we can do better in the future. You know, it might be our fault, but we can fix it and do better in the future. We can be better, you know, we can do better and make the world a better place is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> Failures suck, but it is an important part of doing better in the future. And I talk about like understanding people and I feel like that is the most important part because like people make up everything else. But I'm also like using this as like a metaphor for like everything else in general. Like we should try to understand like all aspects of the world because we have not, again, we have nothing to lose from more understanding. For example, uh, college style drinking parties, you know, wild, crazy drinking parties where like a lot of like bad things tend to happen, you know, and like it's not necessarily like these are fundamentally bad but like the way that we approach it can be very dangerous you know and i think it's because like we don't understand it enough you know like i remember back in my college days i feel like an old man but like back in my college days which was like a uh, two three years ago um so back in my college days the i heard like early college days i heard reports of like people like bad things happening at drinking parties like all the time like it was disturbingly common and you know not not anything bad against my college specifically but um like because this happens at like every college and again this happens at like outside of college as well you know like bad things tend to happen at drinking parties and when i and i'm i'm socially awkward i'm you know, a, a weird guy, you know, I'm not necessarily like the type of person to be invited to these things. So whenever I heard about it, I was like, oh, well, y'all, y'all are crazy. You all are just like weird and I don't understand you. And like, okay, yeah, you're all just monsters or idiots or, you know, I didn't necessarily go to the effort of trying to figure out why this was happening. You know, I just assumed like, oh yeah, well, these people are awful and need to go away, you know, stop being such idiots. Until near the end of my college experience, like somewhat near the end, um, I was just so happened to be invited to one of these parties. And uh, yeah, because like, I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to parties with absolute strangers. It was like part of like a like club or something I was doing at school, at college. So I'm like, okay, I vaguely know and trust these people to not have anything bad happen at this party right and then i went and like i was like oh that's why all these things happen because like the thing about like a drinking party especially people you don't know very well is like the whole goal of the party is to relax and have fun and like that can quickly like being an adult and like stopping things before it gets too dangerous is viewed as like ruining the fun you know so it's 
very easy to like drink one too many shots because like everyone's like oh have another drink have another drink oh yeah let's go you know and i'm like oh i don't know i'm, I'm not really feeling another drink and they're like oh don't be such a party pooper you know don't... And i'm like oh okay fine one more you know like the whole like that that sounds stupid but like the environment of a drinking party naturally creates that environment you know it naturally creates like the type of environment where it is very easy to get swung like thrown into that kind of situation now i was reading a um a certain scientific railgun spin-off novel <laughs> and um in that they went to like an amusement park and like people were like they, that the people who ran the amusement park were at war with somebody else and like there were people like fighting and shooting and killing each other like on in broad daylight on the streets and like every and it was like a big amusement park kind of like the disneyland effect where like you could get away with that because people just assumed like the whole point of the book was like people just assumed nothing was going on because of the environment created a point where like oh hey you know they're, they're not actually dying they're just really it's just really good special effects and the whole point is like it's very easy to create a type of environment where these things can happen even to the best of us it's very easy to be kind of washed in even someone like me who doesn't necessarily like get too mixed up with what other people think because like Again, growing, growing up my whole life disagreeing with a lot of what, uh, what other people think. But even me, like, it's easy, even for me, like, it's very easy to accidentally fall into that. In my defense, I, like, about an hour or so into that party, an hour or two into that party, I realized, like, oh, fudge, this is, this is not doing good. Like, I started feeling sick. There was someone, like, passed out in the corner. So I was, like, I, like, took the initiative to, like, stand up and be, like, I can't. I can't do this anymore. I got to go. I'm like, oh, no, don't be such a party pooper. Stay. I have one more drink. And I'm like, no, I have to go. And then I left. Even I was thinking like, well, was that really like the best thing to do? Like, I don't know. Like I did. I was feeling sick. I was not really in a position to help people. Although I do, in retrospect, should have gotten someone, should have like made sure, like been the adult and been gotten somebody that could help, you know? But from what I know, that party d ended up fine. Because again, they were people who like, I generally trusted, but again, know more about everyone. Like I didn't 100% understand them. So it was still a dangerous situation. So I think basically the point of the story is now I understand, now I get it. Now I feel like before I was like, oh, this is a really stupid problem that shouldn't be happening. And now I'm like, Oh, this is a really serious issue with a lot of complexities and very easy. It's a lot harder of a, a lot harsher of an issue than I previously thought it was. So now I have more of an understanding. So now I know more like, okay, well, what can I do to stop this from happening? Because like drinking parties aren't inherently bad, but I do think like we need like a something like designated driver to like someone to shut off the fun when things stop being fun you know someone that's like outside of the amusement park to, in order that can see things objectively you know basically a designated driver that has the off button is basically what i think would be a good idea okay i've caught my breath we're back <laughs> i uh this is a very like these are things i've been thinking about for like a very long time it's a very like things i feel very strongly about you know and i have a lot of like intense emotions and like the reason i want to make this is because i've just been stewing on these emotions for like a while now and so like i just want this is a, it's a very this is a very emotional experience for me because it's like getting all this off my chest you know anyway speaking of me that's what the that's what this last part's going to be about <laughs> But yeah, so how I try to be a purveyor of peace, love, and understanding. Again, like, as I've said before, like, I make mistakes, I make flaws, I am ignorant in a lot of things, as I just said with that whole example of the college story. 
So, like, I'm not the best when it comes to this, but I do think, like, in terms of seeing it as, like, this is our end goal that we need to be pursuing, and it's fine if we don't get all the way there. I think I think I'm good at I think I think I do a pretty good job of pursuing like peace, love and understanding and trying to increase it in the world. Cuz obviously that's why that's a large reason why I came to Japan. Hi, I'm an I'm currently an English teacher living in Japan in case you didn't know that. <laughs> but um yeah, yeah, and the reason I did that is because not only because I want to have people understand me that that's a it's a very valuable experience of like being able to like go to places and be like hey what's up i'm an i'm an american i'm I'm a weird american i'm not necessarily like your typical exam a typical example of what an american is but like this is what an american can be you know this is what someone from a different culture looks like you know like spreading that kind of understanding which I think is very valuable. But also, just as importantly, if not more so, I want to grow my own understanding of other cultures because I understand that, like, yeah, like, I've lived in America, like, mo most of my life. Like, the first time I went out of the country was, uh, like, when I was, like, in my 20s, like, to Japan, you know, back in 2015 when that happened you know and like i did that because like and i continue to interact with different cultures because like i want to understand it too because again this whole like circle of life like i understand other people better and that can help me like reflect on myself and i can be understood in that whole like loop of positivity and understanding and peace and love you know because and uh you know even because i probably won't be in japan forever like you know, not just not only because like I miss my friends and family, but also like I think like I can continue to spread this peace, love, and understanding better, just as effectively elsewhere. Like I can go to Japan, learn all about it, and learn like about other parts of the world, and then come back to America and be and use that better understanding to help other people reach a better understanding, you know? And I value understanding a lot, which is why I put myself in situations where I can better understand people around me, you know, like going to Japan and on, and also like that. I think that's why I appreciate art a lot, why I appreciate making art and why I appreciate creating or making art and consuming art, experiencing art, I think is a better word because like for creating art, like art, is another form of communication like right the the main way that we clear up misunderstandings is communication like being like oh i don't understand this explain it or like oh here's what i feel this is what this is what i understand let me give that to you and then maybe we can build more of an understanding you know the main way that we clear up misunderstandings and work to better understand ourselves and the world around us is through communication and um, art form is just another form of communication. Like there are things in art that can't be expressed without art, you know? Like, let me think for a good, a good example would be uh, like, I just recently watched Sangatsu no Lai in the anime. And um, the whole point of that show is basically like understanding that, at least my interpretation of the show is basically understanding that like, yeah, life sucks for you, but also, like, life sucks for everyone, you know? <laughs> like, life's just, everyone has their own individual problems that make life difficult and makes things, people act certain ways. Everyone has their own unique history and background, you know? And, like, that's, like, basically, like, oh, well, you have problems. Well, so does everybody else, you know? Like, and for some people, just hearing like, oh, other people have these problems too makes people feel better. But like for me, like I didn't necessarily like understand that before, like at least not on a deep of level as I do now, because that show is about like not just telling you, yeah, other people have issues too, but just showing you this, you know? 
like showing you the individual people and their individual problems and how that makes them feel and act and behave you know this whole story is the whole like story is like this like kind of episodic like arcs through different characters like journeys through life you know like trying to understand people better a combination of just like seeing this firsthand and better and like it also takes advantage of the fact that it's an anime as well it's also a manga but like i feel like an anime the anime like gives helped me understand a lot better because it has like certain kind of like a pacing and music and visuals and directing that all like build this deeper understanding of emotion rather than just explaining what this emotion is you know it's a difference it's the difference between like saying the word sad and seeing a picture of a frowny face you know like they're both the same emotion but like they're communicated through different ways and through interacting with both of them you can gain a better understanding of what this means so that's why i like arts and specifically anime a lot because it just resonates with me in a way that makes it easier to understand the world around me and myself. So I want to practice what I preach, basically. You know, I want to be the change that I want to see in the world. So I want to be an open book. I want to let everyone know everything what's going on about me, like... And if you have any questions, like, ask them, you know, like, just make a better effort to understand myself and to ha help other people understand me and help them, me, them, help me better understand them, them understand me and the whole, like, cycle of peace, love and understanding. So let's, let's get a, let's get a few things off of my chest that I've been thinking about for a while and recently came to understand and feel comfortable talking about it okay <laughs> nothing like hugely major or like evil or whatever just like just things that i'm like hey let's let's get let's put everything out there let's let's be an open book you know for example um anyone who's been following me for a long time would remember a guy named blizz we called Blizzard Rules, and he was an old friend, and, like, he disappeared uh, one day from, like, my content and streams, and people were like, oh, where'd he go? And I'm like, I don't know, he got mad and blocked me one day. And so, like, that, for a while, that's kind of where I left it. I'm like, okay, well, you know, we fought all the time anyway, so I'm sure we'd be better off apart. And I do still kind of think that might be the case, because, again, like, the compatibility issue of, like, understanding that like two people are just would be better off in a, pushing their efforts towards interacting with uh, and understanding other things you know again you can't gain perfect understanding so you have to control where your efforts are but i do think it's important to understand like what when you when something goes wrong like what went wrong and i what i think happened is basically like i wanted to start like a podcast series but i always knew that like the issue of like having like everyone like plan and like figure out like how does everyone meet up and like coordinating everyone's schedules to be in the podcast you know so my mentality about it was like i'm gonna record the podcast at this time anyone who's online can be in the podcast and if you're not then you can just be in the next one and so I was thinking that was a very non-confrontational way of doing it. And basically what I realized later is that was very like, I misunderstood his feelings towards the matter because he was like, he viewed that as like, oh, you started this big podcast without me. So you don't really care about me or care about like my feelings or emotions, you know, like that sort of like misunderstanding of like, well, it's not really a misunderstanding because I think that did happen. Like, I think, like, I definitely underestimated how important it was to him that he was in the, at least the first episode of the podcast. Because, like, to that, to him, like, it, I think it mattered that, like, I cared enough about our relationship and him wanting him to be a part of the things that I do to 
bother prioritizing him to be in the podcast, you know? So, like, yes, I was, I misjudged his feelings and hurt them, and I admit that I was wrong because, like, yeah, like, as as good of an idea as that sounds, like, I need, need, I think I needed to make it more clear, to make it, like, this is not, like, this is just a little side thing, and I prioritize, like, it being, like, made rather than it being made right, and I think that kind of recklessness ended up hurting people's feelings. So, my whole mentality now is, like, we fought a lot, like, in the past, like, because we were both, like, young and dumb. So, like, and I think it wasn't just us being young and dumb. I think it's, like, a compatibility issue. So, like, my, the way that I approach it now is, like, if he ever unblocks me and wants to talk about it, I'm super willing to talk, to talk about it and make amends. But, like, I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. Theoretically, I could, like, seek him out and figure, figure out how to contact him. But, like... I feel like my efforts could be better spent elsewhere. Again, like if I happen to run into him or if he unblocks me and wants to talk, then yes, I'm I'm op- I'm willing to talk if he's willing to talk. But like at the end of the day, like I could be better spending my efforts elsewhere if that doesn't happen, you know? I'm just going to like take what I learned and reflect and do better next time, you know, to be more considerate of other people's feelings is basically what I want to do. So the other thing I wanted to talk about was something I've been feeling for like almost my whole life, to be honest, but like something that it's something that like I don't understand fully myself and have trouble putting into words that make it so people don't misunderstand me. Basically, I'm afraid of being misunderstood by saying these things, but like there's no there's no way to understand it if we don't have a conversation about it and basically like like essentially i have had issues say i'm having trouble saying talking about it even now when i want to talk about it because i just don't know how to like what the words to say to make people understand but basically i have had issues with relating to my gender identity for a while like I've always, like, felt like, oh, I'm not, like, a a mask macho man. Like, I'm not into sports or, like, lifting. But, like, I think that kind of, like, goes further. Like, the more I understand, like, like, the trans community, the more I, like, think about, like, oh, well, these feelings aren't necessarily 100%, like, yeah, every man feels like this. It's feelings of, like, oh, okay, well, maybe we need to, like, shift my understanding in a way. Because it's weird because it's, it's not because I feel uncomfortable being 100% a man, but I also it doesn't feel or sit right to like be a woman either, you know, and so the other op, but it also doesn't like feel right to be like gender fluid at all. So like, and these are like questions I'm like, uh, I don't I don't know. I just don't know. So I'm like, just pick the easiest option of like, okay, well, I was born physically a man, so let's just, and that's how other people perceive me, so let's just do this and hope for the best, and the best has not happened, basically. You know, I think people misunderstand me a lot of the, a lot of the time because they perceive me as being, like, strictly a man, and because you're a man, you have to, you have the, all these other, like, things attached with that. You know, I think it's part of, like, going back to what I was saying earlier. It's like, don't assume anything. Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't assume, like, because I'm a man, I think these things. Like, try to, like, approach me on my own terms. But also, like, I also want to make myself more understood. So I'm not in the future against the idea of, like, okay, well, if people have an easier time understanding me, if I say I'm a woman or non-gender binary, then... I would do that because it would help to understand people. It would help me, it would help other people to understand me. And it would also help me to understand myself. Basically, all I'm thinking, all I'm thinking of is 
I don't feel super 100% confident in being a man and co- telling other people that, yes, I am, I am a guy, I'm a man. So basically, if I want to be understood, I need to be 100% honest with what I say about myself. So, and I'm thinking that like saying that, okay, I am 100% a man is not, is like lying in us. And it feels like lying in some sort of sense where maybe like saying something else would be closer to what is actually true about myself, you know? Again, don't judge a book by its cover, you know, have these like fluid like understandings of people but also like for for, on me i'm saying i think this is like a problem on me of like i need to figure this out and figure out a way for other people to understand me better and i think like gender identity is a very large part of how and traditional gender roles are a very large part of how people understand each other so basically all i'm saying is i don't know what my like true gender identity is but i want to have a conversation about it you know this whole reason is another reason why i've stuck with the tag fireboy for such a long time because like it not it doesn't it doesn't quite like have the connotations of like man you know like boy seems closer than man you know on the whole like spectrum you know and so basically what i'm saying is like well maybe I need to go fur- further further in that direction from like man to boy and then further in that direction to get to what I truly like perceive myself to be and what I want other t- others to perceive myself as. Basically, I'm not saying anything super definitive. I just want to start being more open with talking with others about this and not being afraid that their people are going to hate me or call me names or misunderstand what I'm saying cuz like Nobody is going to give me any peace, love, and understanding if I don't try to give out that understanding myself, you know? Because it's worth getting someone to appreciate me, even if I, someone to like me and accept me, even if I have to go through. Basically, if you don't share who you are, nobody's going to hate you, but nobody's going to love you either you know nobody's going to appreciate you for who you are but if you do make more of an effort to put who you are out there then yes there are going to be people who uh, make fun of you call you names and whatnot but there are going to be people who do understand you you know and there might be people who understand better than you do so that's why i'm saying like we need to be more open i'm going back to my title topic of just like or like what i was saying at the beginning about like we need to be open, more open, and you have nothing to lose from more understanding. And again, like, I'm not saying like everyone has to reveal all of their personal secrets if they're not comfortable about doing that. You know, like if someone's like, oh, I don't want to talk about this with this person because it makes me feel uncomfortable. That's that's acceptable. That's fine. You know, that's like, don't assume that that person's trying to hide anything evil. Like, if somebody is feeling like that then what we need to do is create an environment where they do feel comfortable talking about that you know this goes back to assault allegations like if we just create a world where people feel comfortable about coming out about stuff like this without everyone like doubting them or hating them or giving them flack or whatever then people would be more open to talking about these things So it's fine when someone says, oh, I don't feel comfortable sharing this about myself. But we should also acknowledge, like, the fact that they feel that is a problem. Like, we is a reflective on the fact that we have effed up as a society where we have created, where we we don't have a safe place for this person to come out about the things that they feel. Because ideally, if everyone everyone was 100% peace, love, and understanding, then, like, you'd feel comfortable talking about anything with anyone because everyone would give you peace, love, and understanding back, you know? Again, this is an ideal. We can't 100% achieve this goal, but, like, our lives will still be better off if we try to get a little closer because, again, you never know, like, that next step might be the most important step, you know, to make to make this world a place where everybody has peace, love, and understanding, you know? 
And that's, I, I've said that like 20 times. This is a very rambly podcast. And I think anyone who has made it to the end, because I think this is the end, right? I don't have anything else to talk about. I made a bunch of notes. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically like my whole philosophy that I'm trying to like suggest. Again, not like saying this is the absolute truth. Again, objectively correct does not exist. But um, th this is like the whole idea is like, but theoretically, if everybody follows peace, love and understanding, then we will eventually, through some way, shape or form, create a world that is truly like peaceful, loving and understanding. And everyone would be happier off because of it. And I think that is a pretty cool goal that we should all be striving for. Anyway, that's that's going to be the the end of it. Um, again, I want to be an open book. This has been a very rambly podcast, and I appreciate everyone who has made it this far. And again, I want more peace, love, and understanding. So, like, if there's anything you don't understand, if there's anything you want to argue, if there's anything like anything at all you want to like refute about this po about this whole philosophy or or anything that I talked about in this podcast, if you think I'm being insensitive if you think i'm being mean like i want to achieve perfect peace love and understanding so this is this is a safe place i will i will moderate the comments i usually don't get a whole lot of comments so it's usually pretty easy but like especially since i'm since it's so small like feel free to like say say anything you know say like call me out on my bs add anything that you want to say like ask me any questions like and i will like read and respond to all of them not not just about this video specifically, but like in general, you know, if you have anything, anything at all that you want to talk about or ask me or say, like, feel free to contact me like anytime. Like the best way to reach me is uh, Twitter direct messages. Twitter DMs, I think, would be the best way because like I check Twitter like a lot and um, I ch check uh, my Twitter DMs like all the time. So like. And they're open all, all the time to open. Anyone can send me any message that they want in private. And uh, yeah, we just talk about whatever, you know, because that's what I that's what I want to see more in the world. I want I think if everyone's just open to understand each other better, then the world would be a better place. Like I say, peace, love and understanding. But like the most important part of that is understanding because understanding naturally creates peace and love, you know, peace and love by itself can be a good like stopgap, if I'm using that word correctly, can be a good stopgap until we reach true understanding and that should be the priority. But like, again, understanding, building understanding is one of the most important things because it naturally leads to peace and love. So yeah, I think I've said this a million times. If anyone wants to talk to me about anything, feel free. I read all the comments. My Twitter DMs are open all the time, forever. I read everyone, so yeah. That's what I, I will leave you. I will leave you at that. And uh, I'm going to go back to uh, or continue to be a purveyor of peace, love and understanding and try to make the world a better place. And I hope uh, I hope all of you do this. You know, things are kind of uh, sucky and bad in the world in general right now. But uh, it doesn't mean that we can't make it better. You know, we can learn from our mistakes. We can understand things better and we can make the world a truly peaceful and happy place so i will see you all in the next one bye